hi there everyone and welcome to this video today we will be talking through how to post depreciation in business central so um, we've got a few of the videos uh, around fixed assets um, and we will do uh, a few more but this one in particular will focus on the setup um, the configuration and the process for calculating um, depreciation in BC. So let's get into it. Um, first things first, what I'm going to talk through is some of the config that we need to do um, to calculate depreciation. OK, so I'm just going to use the search function here to search for depreciation books here. Um, and you can have uh, multiple depreciation books in Business Central if you want to. I've just got the one here in my demonstration environment and I'm just going to go into the depreciation book card here and I'm going to go into um, the depreciation book FA journal setup. Um, so over here <clears throat> we basically define the journal template that's going to be used in different scenarios. Okay, So when we're using the fixed asset journal we're going to be using um, this uh, particular journal template. When we're using uh, the um, general journal, um, it's going to be this particular template and batch. Um, and then when we're using the insurance journal, it's going to be this template and batch. And the user ID here, you'll notice on this record, is blank. So this applies to all users. Whereas if you want to drop down on here and select a particular user, um, that person will have their own selection here as well. So uh, just be careful. I mean, you will get an error if uh, this um, table is not set up with the right values. Um, if you try and, um, um, and calculate depreciation, it will error and say something like FA journal setup does not exist and uh, you'll be prompted to, to come into this page and add this setup. OK, so once you've done that setup, what we can do is um, let's just review a fixed asset that we have. So if I come into my fixed asset card here, you'll notice that we have a book value. Um, I've got a, a simple fixed asset ledger entry for just the acquisition of this particular fixed asset ledger entry. Um, and you'll notice here that the depreciation for this particular fixed asset begins on the first of March 2024 okay and we're depreciating for 10 years so um, why is that relevant well when I run the automated depreciation routine in Business Central it will look at the depreciation starting date um, and it will use that particular date to determine whether it's going to calculate depreciation or not and there are a few of the checks that it makes you know have I already calculated depreciation for this period and so on but let me just jump into the report here so if i go home and calculate depreciation it brings up my calculate depreciation batch job my report within business central okay now um here i can say i want to calculate depreciation for a particular depreciation book i'm going to use a particular fixed asset posting date and just to force the issue here what we'll do is we'll calculate our depreciation for um, the period of feb okay and uh, i'm just doing this to show you that it shouldn't calculate depreciation just because remember our depreciation starting date on our only fixed asset on our business central environment here said that depreciation would start on the 1st of March. Now, I can add a document number and a posting description here if I want to. Insert balancing account basically inserts the expense account for our depreciation um, into the journal that's generated. OK, so I'm going to leave this as marked as yes for now. We shouldn't get any lines based on the data that I've input here on this, um, this report. But let's go ahead and press OK. And it tells me here, look, the depreciation has been calculated. No journal lines were created. OK, and that's because here, let me go back um, and go calculate depreciation. I selected a date of the end of Feb and my depreciation for my only fixed asset on my environment was not going to start until the 1st of March, OK, 2024. Now, with that, um, we can safely assume 
that as long as your fixed asset depreciation starting date or ending date is not relevant, you know, so if you're before your starting date or after your ending date, it will not calculate depreciation for that particular fixed asset. Or if it has a value, it will um, um, sort of depreciate it to zero. Obviously, there's a, a number of different scenarios there that you could get within the your fixed asset ledger but generally speaking um, it will only calculate depreciation if the fixed asset falls within uh, the, the depreciation calculation falls sorry within these two dates okay so what we'll go ahead and do now is let me say calculate depreciation again I should also say you can use the search function here to just search for calculate depreciation you get the same result and this time I'm gonna say let's calculate depreciation as at the end of March okay so let's copy that down to there sorry um, in here and what we'll do now is press OK and just note this time again that I've got insert balancing account ticked okay so if I say OK there this time it tells me the depreciation has been calculated. One fixed asset geo journal line were created. Do you want to open the fixed asset geo journal window? I'm going to say yes. Now, what we have is a journal generated in here. Um, and if I go to uh, my, my line here, I've got one line with my document number for my fixed asset. The FA posting type is depreciation. It's calculated the amount here for us, and it's also inserted the balancing account because we had that selection ticked on the report request page, okay? So the reason why this line is here is on our report request page. If I go calculate depreciation, we had insert balancing account ticked, okay? And you can see this is the other side to my transaction here and why has it picked GL account 62210 well that's because of the posting setup that I have on my fixed asset okay so if I go to my fixed asset card I've got my depreciation sorry my posting group here is uh, is vehicles and if I go show details on there I will have somewhere here the depreciation expense account is defined as 62210 okay so I can drop down here and change that as I see fit okay um, so once that is done um, you can go ahead then and you can post the journal obviously making sure we're happy with the journal I just need to delete this value here sorry let me just try posting that so yes and that's gone through okay so let's go back to our fixed asset now and on the fixed asset card we can see the book value is affected so I can drill in to the book value here and I have a entry here for the end of March with my document number obviously use something more meaningful if uh, if you're doing this in a live environment um, the FA posting type is depreciation and the amount is the amount which we saw calculated, okay? So BC is basically going to calculate that depreciation amount for you. Um, it could be that you want to do that manually, which, you know, is totally fine as well. So you can come to the fixed asset GL journal, as I'm just searching for now, and you can just enter a value in here, right? So I can go April the 30th. I can say fixed asset number 90 and I can enter the value in here as I see fit okay so this is just about you know do we want to do the calculation of depreciation ourselves or do we want to use the automated routine within business central so it's up to us we can do that manually ourselves and don't forget guys there are different depreciation methods that you can define against a fixed asset as well so uh, we will do other videos on that so you can see what that looks like now one final thing that I wanted to run through let me just delete this line and I just want to show you 
um, around dimensions on fixed assets. So um, it may not work for you. It may not be something that's relevant. But if I go into fixed asset and dimensions, you see here that I've got my area dimension code and I've just selected dimension value 10 against my fixed asset. OK, now when you use the automated routine, so if I go home and calculate depreciation, just going to set that to the end of April again. And we'll just say OK. Um, what you get is those dimensions. They flow through to our lines that are generated. OK, so not only the fixed asset line, but if I come down to the second line, you'll see that also has area 10 assigned. So it's the same dimension that is on the fixed asset. Right. So uh, just a note there that if you use your dimensions, I've got department and customer group here. So if you have like mandatory dimensions set on your income statement or your balance sheet, um, you'd need to consider how you use those. And you might need to do a, a bit of a change to BC, um, you know, to, to make it work the way that you want to. You can also edit in Excel as well, but I don't think you get all the dimensions in uh, in edit in Excel. So just want to be weary of there. OK, if, uh, if you're using that to, to calculate your depreciation. OK, so that is everything I wanted to show you on this uh, video. I hope it was helpful. Um, obviously, give it a play in a test environment. Reach out if you have any questions. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one.